Why do white people love Wayne Brady so much? White people love Wayne Brady because he makes Brian Gumble look like Malcolm X. And we are live. I just wanted to play that real quick. Rest in peace to Paul Mooney, one of the greats. Help put Richard Pry on the map. Help with Dave Chappelle as well, but you guys knew that. But guess what? We are here for another episode of us. It's me, Fousey B. And it's her, Ashley D. What up, Ashley D? But yeah. And so let's get into some, uh, start some tunes here so we can get on the level. I want the energy. I want the energy. So let's go. Get it right. Hey, get it right. Got some energy. This is uh, Nicki Minaj with uh, Drake and Lil Wayne. Just came out last week. It's pretty good. And then we'll get to what we're talking about. I just might crash, dog. Let me take this Balenciaga mask off to ask y'all who asked y'all. See, they told me to stomp my ass off. That's all. Bop, 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 bop. He was a good cat. My bad, dog. Don't put no K after that B, boy. Bad. Okay, okay, okay. Still into it, still into it. I need to feel the energy today. It's a beautiful week. It's a beautiful day. We're going to get on some behaviorals. Behavioral science. Yes. Turn up. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Let's get it. Doing wonderful. How about yourself today? I am doing great. Awesome. Awesome. It's glad to be back. Yeah, it's been a wonderful week. It's a beautiful week. Uh, hey, guys, we got a name change now. Um, we've been thinking about changing the name, and we finally came on, and this is now part of my sarcasm, because uh, you're dealing with two sarcastic individuals, um, at least me. Even that was sarcastic in what I said. <laughs> But yeah, so what we're going to do is before we get into the, today's topic, which is on your worst behavior, we wanted to just rebuttal last week. Um, I got a lot of feedback. Uh, she got some as well. Got a lot of feedback. Everybody really liked it. I like the fact that, you know, even though we're changing the name now, um, you know, this is a living, it's a living thing and we're growing and it's, I don't know, just awesome. It's wonderful to add, you know, add that music. Thank you, Fuzi. Um, add some new content and, you know, just add new ideas. So I, I think that's what, you know, in my first episode about why, I remember we talked about that. This is a living thing. So we, we are a living, breathing podcast. Love the that's feedback. What we want to do. Yeah, love the um, feedback from all of our friends. So, hey, let, let me jump into some things and then I'll, I'll ask you a question as well. Um, the rebuttal. So this is just a couple of things that I got from people that sent me messages after they listened mm-hmm. to last week's episode. And I think it's something we should do every week. You know, we'll just get a quick rebuttal. Um, so one jealousy is not healthy uh, another one is a situation ship has to have a clear definition another one is you can be rightfully jealous in a situation ship but it can't be a determining factor in an argument um, this one was funny is you gotta be fucked up if you think the relationship isn't equal to a situation ship <laughs> um, and then another one was I think no one ever sets out to get into a situation ship it's just something that they find themselves in and know it's not healthy. Um, and now I have a question for you. Okay, Ms. bring Ashley it on. D. Uh, is a situation ship different than friends with benefits or can it be both? I think they can cross over. I think of the feedback that I got from people. There was a lot of that. Everybody asked, well, isn't that the same? And I, I don't think it's the same. I think you can cross over back and forth or go back in and out. But I think we clarified, though, in a situation ship 
that you didn't necessarily have to be friends. Right. You could be, you know, you're obviously in some sort of relationship, you know, because uh, it's a situation. In something. Yeah. You're in something. <laughs> you're in something and you have some clear, you know, like at least a little bit of respect and some boundaries, but, but you can be friends with benefits. You can just be, you know, just good friends. So, so it can be both. I, yeah, definitely. All right, perfect. Perfect. It can be both, but it doesn't have to be the same. Gotcha. Now we got that rebuttal out of the way. Anything else you want to say before we jump into this wonderful topic? No, but I, the, I, no, nothing specific, but listening to all the feedback all week, there was, gosh, you know, since obviously we just dropped two episodes and we're pushing it out to friends and, you know, some supporters and people are going to follow. Um, I was interested to see how much feedback came back specifically about situationships. Um, I just oh, found I it interesting. It. They love those they situations. Did. They love the topics. We had a lot of downloads. That were actually, pretty impressive for our first um, real true episode. We had, you know, just a huge number of downloads and people listening. Um, so I was just really impressed. But they did love the conversation. They, were, you know, they definitely did. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, so I guess that's why we, you know, I kind of we opened it up for what are we going to talk about next time? I said, well, you know, I. I think we should kind of stick along with the same tap, you know, the same topic and see how it molds out. But when we were talking about situationships, there's a lot of key points we kept talking about. Right. Like behaviors and such. Behaviors on yeah. your worst behavior. Oh. They never loved us. So <laughs> I'm always on my best behavior. Oh, that's what they say anyway. <laughs> that's my answer. I don't know. That's my answer, and I've I'm seen sticking. Her at the bars before, guys. <laughs> don't listen to that's that. my answer. I'm sticking to it. So uh Tell me, what, what type of uh, behavior should people expect in relationships or in the, say, your ex's behavior or if you're married? Like, wh- where do you want to go with this? What type of situation, to, I'm saying situationship, what type of behavior should you be? Let's start with if you're in a relationship, what type of situations should you do or what type of things should you do or shouldn't you do based on your behavior, your behavioral patterns? Oh. I plead the fifth. Can I do that this time? No, you can't. I tried to do that last time. Remember? I know. But <laughs> if you plead the fifth, we no. now don't have a podcast. Um, so, <laughs> so I've had many years of relationships, marriages. Um, um, we just talked about it last. How many time. marriages have you had? We've defined this clearly. It was three. Three. Okay. Three. Just okay. Sure. Um, working on my f- fourth divorce. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> wow. That, that jumped fast. Last week, you just had a boyfriend. <laughs> working on my fourth divorce. Um, everybody else seems to think it's hilarious when I say that. Um, uh-huh. I'm just, I remember, remember, we're doing this podcast. And I'm working on becoming a comedian. So, um, But, you know, behaviors. I think that conversation came out because we're talking about me being in a relationship now. And how do I define what's right and what's wrong? So fortunately, right. I have a good relationship with this person. So I can say, yeah, is this okay? But I clearly know it's probably not. Um, and sometimes he says yes. And sometimes he says no. But um, I think I think I'm a, I'm a very friendly person. I don't know a stranger. I don't, you know, I flirt. I'm a friendly flirter with people I work with or people, my clients and, you know, strangers. I can be in the Please grocery the store. <laughs> right. So everybody's yeah. a friend. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I always wonder if the other person is okay with that. I've seen other relationships where it was unacceptable because that flirting clearly crossed over a line. Because it made the other person uncomfortable. Um, I think. So this would be you flirting in front of that person? Of course. But other people? But it's mine is more of a friendly flirt. You know. <laughs> friendly. So it's a like friendly a, there's flirt. A, there's a business flirt. There's a well, there's a straight flirt. up. There's a straight up. I'm not with my boyfriend or you're not with your girlfriend. You're straight up flirting like I'm trying to. Sleep you know, with you flirt. Yeah. Sleep with you flirt. There's a business yeah. flirt. You flare up for business things, business purposes, right? <laughs> yeah, but there's a line with that. I mean, there's always a line. So I think this... Top, yeah, I'm not topic. talking about like sexual harassment. I'm talking about you, you're extra friendly to people in business because you right. want to get business done right. with them. And that's just me being friendly. If anybody knows me, that you know, I'm always like, you know, joking and jovial and flirty. But I think what comes, what we're talking about on topic is on your worst behavior. Right. I do know that people will take that to the next level and it's just clearly inappropriate. But where's that level? Yeah. You know. <laughs> Do you think there's a such thing as platonic flirting? Yeah. Oh, definitely. 
Flirt with your friends. So yeah, I flirt with I I flirt with my friend friends. You know, just my regular friends. I'm always like, yeah, you you know, you wish you could marry me or something like that. You you could be my fourth divorce. (laughs) You could be be my fourth divorce. (laughs) Um, But there are times when you know I'm even I'm even uncomfortable with other people, especially if they're in a relationship flirting with me when I they're clearly crossing that line. Most of the time, it's when the other person's not looking. To be yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and and that shows just a level of deceit if they it's disrespectful. are doing it. Or it's, it's straight up disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to get into some things that I was thinking about with this little topic. Um, you know, about acting. It, it's basically people that act single in relationships. Oh. Like that's definitely <laughs> unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you respect your relationship. Now, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. I am not the judge of anyone. I see people do it. It's not my problem. As I like to say, it's not my circus. It's not my monkeys. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like, for instance, we talked about flirting with someone that's not your spouse or your significant other. If you know that flirting can lead to something else or you can't control yourself when you really should, uh, you probably shouldn't do it. Just, You're out you of know, your lane. Yeah. You, You're you, definitely out of your lane. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to take it to the side a little bit. So we talked about, you know, that flirting thing and um, I'm going to take it a, a little bit to the side. So you were just said about being single and acting, single, acting in single in a relationship. There's a whole nother level there that has nothing to do with flirting. That has to do with that. Even though you're in a relationship, you're still um, even, you know, the things that you do planning wise or the things that you're making when you're making plans for your future or when you're going out to the store, you're still only thinking about yourself. Even when you're picking up your, you know, your significant person, um, you know, a lot of people actually do that. And so I've heard a lot about that when we're, when I was talking, had some feedback from some of my girlfriends and a couple of my guy friends, they were talking about their own relationships, but then they started talking about unacceptable behaviors or, you know, or acting single when you're in a relationship. I said, well, how, well to, clear, to be clear, how many years are we talking about? The person's like, well, four or five or four six. Four years is enough time to know if you want to be in a relationship with someone. Right. And, and so, and then the next person was like, oh, the next person was 10 years. I was like, That's yeah, really we're okay. Now we're done. <laughs> After 10 years, if you really haven't defined what those lanes are and where you're going in that prog- progress. Or if you're just looking for an out, for instance, uh, so flirt with other people. And then, you know, when you're seeking attention from someone other than your significant other or your spouse on a consistent basis. Uh, that's the worst behavior. Like you get a nasty award for that. That's mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. And you may be crazy. Um, but yeah, when you when you seek attention from someone else, or and I got a good one for you, when you share too much of your relationship with people outside of your relationship, like if you talk bad of your okay. partner, if you downplay them whenever you're around people, mm-hmm. that that's a pretty unacceptable behavior. That's not your worst behavior. So there's two things that come to mind when you said that. Okay. I've used the name before emotional cheating and people thought, oh, that just means you're you're cheating somebody emotionally. No, what that means is that if you and I are in a relationship right. and things aren't really going well and I need to turn to somebody to help because I'm having a bad day or because I want to talk something, a serious conversation or deep, I'm taking it away from you, the opportunity to be my person to that, that right. is supposed to do that. So I'm going to call somebody of the opposite sex. And maybe it's an ex-boyfriend. A lot of times it's an ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend. Don't call your ex when you're going through things with no. your current person. You don't know how many don't people. Oh, my God. That. It happens all the time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it, well, it's, don't do that. It's just a recipe for disaster. But that, to me, is emotional cheating. That's when you reach out to someone else. Just like you were cheating physically, you're reaching out for somebody to fill that hole. So <laughs> emotional cheating is the same. You're filling a different hole. You're filling a different gap. <laughs> filling a hole, all right. I hear you. <laughs> so, but, so I don't think people understand that because they, well, we didn't have sex. Okay, well, it's going to lead to that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you call your ex, you probably, that person was the person that was there for you previously. Mm-hmm. So you're going backwards in life. Um, and this is strictly if you're in a relationship, you're going backwards in life. Uh, and you're going to resort back to what you were it's like you know if you're addicted to a drug or something you know you're relapsing you're relapsing to an old relationship why you're with your new relationship because you can't handle what's going on you're not giving that person even though you may be struggling you're you're taking away opportunities for that person to step up to the plate 
Right. Okay. So the second one. Um, and you're opening that door as well yeah. for them to come in. You know, you're, you're opening the door for your ex or whoever mm-hmm. to think that there's opportunity. And then uh, what was your second one you were saying? The second there? one was settling. So I think uh, I, the settling part of it is that whichever relationship you're in, whether it is a situation, whether it is a relationship, whether it's a relationship gone sour. Right. Um, and you said, you know, acting single. Well, a lot of that is because when you start going backwards and then you're like, well, you know, we live, we still live together um, or we, you know, what, what are we supposed to do? Or she loves me. I don't really, you know, I, we're growing apart where well, they settle. And so the settling part and they're done that plenty of times. I'm like, well, it's harder to leave or it's, it's more complicated than that. Or I don't want to be single. Right. There's, you can, you do not want to be single. You do not want to be alone in the world until you settle for something that's not really for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another one I have is uh, when you don't check in with the person you're dating. That's that's the worst behavior. You uh, you know, you got we're all grown. You all, you, everybody's independent. You want to do what you want to do. But if you're in a relationship, you owe it to that person to at least check in with them. At least, hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be with my friends. They might not like it sometimes. You know, a lot of people hang out with their friends too much. Um, I know I hang out with my friends a lot, but that's what friends are for, right? But uh, I'm not sleeping with my friends. I'm also not in a relationship. So I guess that doesn't really fall in that category currently. Still waiting for those girls to hop in my DMs. No, none of them did. I was, I was highly disappointed. But you're talking physical. Highly. No, I mean, back checking, in, in, checking in physically. Not even physically. Calling. Sending text messages, okay. calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, are in physical. You know, in, in physical. I in hope you physically t- so, check with your person. Here's what I think. I'm going to give you the other version, the other contrast of that is checking in emotionally Mm -hmm. and being open. You need to be open and I need to be open to say, hey, listen, how are we feeling? How are we progressing? We don't have to talk about this every week. You don't have to talk about every month. But sometimes I think it would be healthy um, because this is when shit goes bad. Right. When, when I'm like, well, I just don't know how he feels. I just don't know how she feels. Oh, you know, you then you start making that up. Then you start getting depressed and then you go start and going backwards. And then you want to go back to your ex to talk because y'all had such a good relationship. Oh, well, you didn't because right. you're not together. But it's that settling. And that's what I see a whole lot of, well, you know, where. No, not I don't want to be. Stuff. I don't want to be single. You know, a lot right. of people don't want to go back to the. Da- I'm 48 years old. Do you think I want to go back to the dating world? That's just you know. But I don't care how old you are. The dating I world no sucks. Idea. The dating world sucks. I don't care what age it is. And I think that scares people more so. So they end up settling. And I think that's unacceptable. Period. Right. For well, each I mean, for both parties. If you're at, if you're at 48 and you're looking out there, I'm sure they have like a uh, cougar.com. Tinder for the Tinders or something oh. like that. You know, <laughs> Jewish, ge- ge- Jewish only. <laughs> Jewish like only.com, dot com, Adult Friend Finder, Sugar yeah. Daddy dot com. Sugar you know. Daddy dot what? Yeah, <laughs> you boy, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I didn't say you were I, the Sugar Daddy, but <laughs> what, what, what else? Would I be? They do I have SugarMama dot com too, by the way. Hey, sugar Mamas, yeah. hop in my DMs, yeah. slide in my inboxes. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and the other thing. <laughs> About worst behavior is actually cheating. If you're in a committed relationship, the worst behavior you can do is cheat. Because that I think that's crystal clear on that one. You know, if you're a committed yeah, relationship. Yeah, there's never a question stop there. Playing with people with emotions, you know. Some, and again, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just letting you know. You, that's not your relationship if you're out here cheating. Just be single. I know it's hard. You know, go to sugardaddies.com or whatever Ash was talking about over there. Um, but Hold on. Can you find a relationship where... This is probably another episode for another day, but what if you just found a relationship where you had an open relationship? Then it's defined as an open relationship, but that's not the same thing. Yeah, true. Okay. They already, you right. already know You've already defined like, that you're yeah. not necessarily breaking. We're talking about a monogamous yeah. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Unacceptable the, behavior. The, the, so. the worst behaviors. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the subject of cheating, actually, you know what? Before we get on the subject of cheating and moving it, we're going to go to a commercial break, pay some bills, and we'll be right back. Isn't it frustrating when you reach out for a contractor and they don't show or they show up late or they don't do a good job? Well, good news. My people down at AO Home Repair in Charleston, South Carolina are here for you. They've been in the community for 15 years and they service the whole Tri-County region. The best part is this. AO Home Repair is the go-to contractor whom many of the top real estate agents in this market call for everything 
I'm talking pre-listing inspections, punch list repair items, roofing, plumbing, screened in porches, HVAC, termites, crawl space, moisture issues, and the list goes on and on. The agents keep my man Rob and Finger at AO Home Repair on speed dial because they know that the clients are going to get fast, guaranteed quality reports. So if you or anyone you know needs a one-stop shop for residential repairs and maintenance from, again, a 100% locally owned company, call, text, or email AO Home Repair. That number is 843-860-7215. That email is aohomerepair at gmail.com. Tell them Fousey and Ashley sent you. And we are back. Thank you for going through that. Uh, we love our sponsors. So listen, Ashley. Yes, Fuzzy. If you date a man with money, do you expect him to cheat? I'm talking big money, <laughs> um, wealthy money. That's not the question that you said you were going to ask. No, I, I, that's a, that's a deeper question. It, it um, that just threw me, I know, but it threw my mind into something else because. I was having a conversation with, speaking of, that's so weird because you were just talking about, talking about being 48. I was talking to a friend of mine who's 48 and uh, we were talking about the dating world and we had made a comment and I had, I was the one that actually made the comment was either you have a really nice guy who is um, you know, not necessarily loaded guy who's just, just your normal average show who's, you know, just kind of laid back and chill or you have this you know, guy who has a lot of money, wants to go out all the time and wants to travel, but he's a cheater. Right. And so, but it's, it's a flamboyant relationship. You know, like really, he's a type of personality, right? Is it, we're just really stereotyping, but it does happen more so than not is those ones that are just out there and more active and more money. They tend to be stereotyped and it tends to be more than more right than wrong that they're the ones that are cheating. So then you're like, Oh, I'll just go with this guy over here. That's a little bit more laid back or chill. He's not necessarily loaded. He's not broke. You know, and, and so, but that messes with, I think, in dating and relationships, it kind of messes with you. It does. And in the back of your mind, you always think someone mm-hmm. is cheating. Uh, you know, we're, we're, everyone's a little bit insecure. Uh, either you're insecure or you don't care. Uh, that Those are the right. balance of the scales. But uh, I was actually watching on Netflix the other day, The Carmichael Show. And it was an episode called Everybody Cheats. And Gerard, mm-hmm. who was the main character, he was saying how... You know, cheating is natural for successful rich people. Um, <laughs> according to Gerard, an income of 50K to 100K, uh-huh. the bracket in which he himself lands, uh-huh. uh, it means that a man has thought about doing it but won't act on those urges. But once a man cracks 100K, he's definitely cheated. I don't know if I agree with that, but it's an interesting perspective. Well, you're right. It, it may or not may not be true, but you know that in these random statistics and conversations and jokes that there are that there obviously was something to Some facts in there yeah. somewhere yeah so That's interesting but that that leads to but what it, I does that mean poor about. people don't don't cheat as much no, essentially poor, poor, poor people cheat i mean i don't know i don't have the exact numbers yeah i mean that's more poor people than rich i have people, to think so about would, that I but presume i can see that, that poor though. people cheat maybe the percentage is higher yeah you know if, if, if you're mm-hmm. a man or a woman with a bunch of money then you simply don't care if you lose the person that you're with because you know that you can afford to get another one. Um, or like I, those divorces, I, though. <laughs> but I also think if you have that kind of money and businesses and things like that, you can leverage your stuff. You can, uh, you know, you you have more leverage. You have the house. You have the kids. You have the cars. And you're like, oh well, right. you know. So you're you're essentially leveraging, even if it's not verbally. So that that, that leads to my question: What does? infidelity tolerance change with money like yes for oh. up and down <laughs> There's so you know if, if i'm a man and i'm very wealthy and we're in a relationship and i mm-hmm. cheat on you um you know you, you suck up your pride a little bit and say i'm gonna you know stack this money up especially when you're in a situation where you sign like a prenup or something mm-hmm. and you're not gonna get a dime besides a little bit of spousal right. support or for the kids if you have them um i think so i okay. think that people they have a tolerance. Now, there's very proud women in this world and men. Let's not forget that women cheat, too. They actually cheat better. Than I them. think they cheat um, more. They, they cheat better because you guys are emotional men. We just, you know, we, we think what our second. Well, you're, you're in part. and out. I think I think that in and out. I think that men do a lot of emotional cheating, just like women do that. What I was talking about earlier, where mm-hmm. they because I think men are really, really apt to go back and start talking 
to their female ex or a female coworker or, right. you know, it, that happens a lot um, when they're not able to communicate with their own spouse or, or girlfriend. Right. And I, I agree. Nice. Would you like to slow yeah. dance? <laughs> no. You, you, you know what the song is? What is it? This is Gary oh. Stewart. She's acting single. I love I'm it. drinking double. <laughs> oh, I love this song. I love it. I do this in real life. She be acting single, so I be drinking double. Nice. Let me buy you a shot. Double. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for the little sound break so we could take a <laughs> sip of water and take a breath. Right. Um, so they acting single, drink double. But yeah, back to our original subject, which uh, I think we both agree that, you know, infidelity is the tolerance is there with money. The more money that person has mm-hmm. that cheats on you, you might turn your back one or two times until you're finally okay. fed up. So it's that leverage thing for sure. When I was talking earlier, you know, if we, if we had kids and a house and jobs and stuff like that, um, divorce is expensive. And, you know, if I didn't plan my life to be, um, divorced and having to take care of my own house or et cetera, et cetera. Huff. I don't know. I'm mean, half. Yeah. Eddie. My goals though, if, if I'm in that relationship, you know, I basically you're asking me if I would stick around. I have been in a cheating relationship. So my last, you know, I didn't have, the, did you stick around? I did. And mostly is because he was extremely narcissistic and he, I think he duped me. I think he duped me in a sense that, I kept on hearing what I needed to hear at the, at the time I needed to hear it, right? So it was like, oh, this is not happening, or I didn't do this, and I didn't do that. And I, 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 he was a charmer. He was a narcissist. If anybody's ever been in that relationship. Um, so, yeah, um, I was... I was making excuses for it because his excuses were... Uh, made me make but, excuses. But did you get a... Uh, it wasn't about money? money. It wasn't about money. Uh, except for the fact that I thought with us being together, we were going to be successful, right? Right. Um, you plan yeah. your future. I was planning my future and I thought, it, you know, both of us hitching our wagons to each other was going to take me to another level I wanted to be, but it was essentially, so it was a hundred percent. you guys were hitching your wagons to each other and <laughs> yeah. meanwhile he was playing in somebody else's wagon? Yeah, he had a couple other horses <laughs> <laughs> pulling his wagon. And then... <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, though, I kind of found, found out that um, I was the one bringing in the money. I was also the one paying for everything. And I was also the only one five, six late, years later. I'm the only one that has the money and successful and have businesses and doing my thing. Realized I hitched my wagon to um, a wagon with no wheels. A wagon? With yeah, no wheels. I'm, I'm really quippy. I mean, I'm getting a little quippy right now because I'm kind of getting mad. I'm getting mad right now. Mad. <laughs> we well, might need to change topics. Don't get me mad. I mean, okay. um, this is so, the past. So, yeah. You know, he struck out. Yes. He, he got it wrong. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, with so that I, being said. I think it, my the final answer, by the way, is does infidelity tolerance change with money? It definitely does. Absolutely. It definitely does. So. Absolutely. I'm broke. Though, Not guys. that it should, by the way. So, <laughs> ladies, you ain't, Rihanna, you ain't got to worry about me cheating on you. Oh. I'm broke. You rich. You can cheat on me. I just, <laughs> oh, see, there I'll you go. I'll stay home and, wa- and ma- watch the kids. Right? <laughs> you got to have them first. Though. Right. So, so what, what's next? What are we talking about next? Well, next, we'll actually get into something fun. But first, let's pay a bill because we need the money. We need the money. We love giving shout outs and special credit to our wonderful sponsors and supporters. So, you know, photos have the power to help you relive a specific moment in time and recall all the emotions and details surrounding that moment. Justin Falk is an award winning photographer living in my beautiful hometown of Charleston, South Carolina. His passion is to blend portraits and landscape photography into unique works of art. He is committed to capturing the best days of your life and preserving them as images that you will cherish forever. 
go check out his collection of beautiful prints for sale on his website. Or go check out his booth out if you're in downtown Charleston, South Carolina at the City Market. Or check out his amazing portrait packages if you too are interested in having Justin Falk Photography capture your moments in timeless photographs to treasure for a lifetime. You can also follow him on Instagram at Justin Falk Photography. Check out his website at www.justinfalkphotography.com or give him a call at 843-364-2577. Welcome back. Are you ready, Fuzzy? I am, Ashley D. I am. Okay. What are we going to talk about now? Okay, so I got to pick this topic. So we are going to pick a topic that I, I was thinking about the other day, and I was like, ah, you know what? This is perfect. So I'm going to catch you off guard a little bit, all right? Try. Are you? You can try. You can try. Are you ready? <laughs> so, Fuzzy, do you delete nudes after a relationship is done? Fuck no. <laughs> 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 Why? Why? These are gifts given wow. to me. No, um, I knew you were gonna say that though. I mean, but so, why would okay. I delete those? Those I hate the person. I don't hate the body. I mean, the topic of the thing on our thing on our top podcast today is on your worst behavior. So I'm on my worst behavior I'm because like I keep old nudes. I mean, you can send me some new ones and not replace those. <laughs> um, then we can throw away the old ones. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not like I. All right. So it's not like I keep them and I pull them up every now and then, but. You know, I originally, I'll be right there. I originally, <laughs> <laughs> I originally uh, wanted those and received them. And, you know, I don't, mm-hmm. none of my exes per se, I hate their guts or anything. Or any right. women that I spoke with, I really don't have any bad relationships with. Um, Except the restraining order ones. The one, yeah, that, yeah no, the, the restraining was... order, <laughs> I found it. No, oh, um, <laughs> oh, there's that. Yeah, she was Do you still have here. her nudes though? Yeah, why not? Oh, she gave true, them to me. True. I, I acquired all of those. Mm-hmm. I earned it. Honestly. I, I earned them honestly. Yeah. I acquired them. And so, you know, I deserve it. And occasionally so, you want to take a trip down memory lane and you want to look at those things. Memory they, lane. They were gifts. Memory lane because you're fighting with your girlfriend and your next relationship? No, or memory no, lane because no. you are having some if, personal time? If I, I well, well, everybody okay. has personal time, okay. I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, no, no. If I'm in a relationship, I don't even look at those things. I don't. Okay. They're in the back of my mind. They're the furthest thing I think of. Okay. Hold on. But, you know, so, so let's just say we're dating. And I happen to look over. We're not dating a guy who's no. listening to this. He's her new person. <laughs> My person. We're not dating. Um, person. So if we're sitting on the couch, though, and I see you scrolling because you're looking at some old sunset pictures and an old dog picture and old yeah, that's car picture. And then all of a sudden, you know, a big set of boobies come up boobies. <laughs> that have been sent to you. Um, and I see it. And I'm going... And I watch your smile. You go from the cats and puppies he did, he did and smirk. cars. Yeah. Cats, puppies, and cars and titties. Right. Um, and I see you smile extra hard. And I'm like, wait a minute. So if I ask you, if I ask you, if we're dating, but let's say we've been dating substantially. We're, and, we're in a serious relationship. Right. And I say, I, at this point, I've let you play with your cars, babies, and, you know, titty pictures. I, oh, I'm done. You're done with what? I don't know. I don't want you looking at anybody else's, you know. Well, 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 first of all, yeah, it wouldn't. Uh, that wouldn't come up. You have to be able to, you know, put them in certain places where you won't just find it. Like she gonna be upset. She swipe it to the left. No, that won't happen. You put them in certain folders or whatever where you know nobody's allowed to see them except me. So I wouldn't be sitting there next to my girlfriend looking at old pictures. Yeah, that's right. Of my like, looking at nude pictures of my old girlfriend. What if she wants to look at them? She gotta get her own. What you mean? <laughs> I mean, you want to share? I can't. I can't lie. I mean, that's I just rude. I, <laughs> I thought we lie. were sharing everything. I thought this well, is a 50 50 well, relationship. Ideally, here. those pictures don't exist. Like, you would never see those pictures. Oh, true. I'm, so. I'm confused as to what, <laughs> what pictures. I'm not gonna sit there on the couch with you and look at new pictures of other women that I've been with while I'm with you. That's just rude. That's a really unacceptable yeah, behavior. Yeah, that is pretty unacceptable. I'm not that bad at all. Okay. So, so would it be okay to look, uh, look at strangers' pictures but instead of the person that you, you know, had a relationship with? Like if we're looking at pictures together? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. If, she, if she's right. into that, oh yeah, baby, True. let's get it. We could sit there and critique her. Most girls and, are. You know, well. Most girls are, I know most, are. Most girls act like they are. They be faking it. But, right. you know, it, it, it's all good and it, you know, it's all fun and games until it's time to play. It's all fun so, and games until somebody cries. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, pictures of her. But, uh, you know, I'm, you know, and on the subject of news, I'm going to straight away a little bit. I was actually with a girl and someone sent me a nude picture and I had no idea. I never asked for it. And so 
the girl picked up on my phone because mm-hmm. we had that relationship to where it was you can right, pick open. up my phone. Right. Yeah. And so, and she's like, why Why is this girl sending you new pictures? And yeah. I'm sitting there like... That sounds like a fight me, waiting to me happen. And you got the same question right now, but, you know, let me look at the picture a little bit first. Let me, <laughs> let me <laughs> save it in my special let, folder. Let me, let me see what it is first. And she was like, no. Um, and so, no, that picture got deleted. Um, you know, and she definitely... You know, but I understood her. She asked me to delete it. I deleted it. And, you know, because I didn't ask that person for it. So it was kind of disrespectful. So did that person that sent you that know you're in a relationship? Great question. I think she knew I was talking to someone. Okay. I don't think she knew that Because you hadn't person. technically defined it and then made it public. Because you can define a relationship but not yeah. make it public. See, I don't put my relationships out there like yeah. that. Like, obviously, girlfriends, you know, you're going to know it's my girlfriend mm-hmm. at some point. But I don't go around bragging like, this is my girlfriend. Or, this is my baby I mean, right here. Mostly you the know. context that I'm trying to like, you probably, you ask you the question. The, see I'm the talking. The about, yeah. Most of the context that I'm asking, though, I'm talking about when you actually... You have a girlfriend. You're, right. you're public. You're, you know, you're literally right. like showing that, up. That person girlfriend. had that. That yeah. person had an idea mm-hmm. that I was with someone. Uh, you know, because I was supposed to. Oh, I'm, I'm in Florida with such mm-hmm. and such, and so she knew I was in Florida mm. with the said person, and so that's why she sent that. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, like, never sent I don't like that one. Never sent. I might even play. I'm playing, trying to play like good cop, bad cop on the you know angel. Why would that bring the police into this? <laughs> But because because <laughs> I may or may not have deleted some nudes, and I, but I would I would also say I, I would I think I was I think I'm comfortable now in my relationships right. that I could say I'm just gonna tell you right now there is a, you know quite a few I'm not gonna say nudes necessarily but you know pictures of other people and that, me maybe me making out with somebody I don't I mean, know look, on my is, phone is that really your business if there's nudes and someone else's phone like if i don't volunteer that information right. should, do i have to tell you that or just we have to wait i mean i didn't really have to say it say it but i mean i have forty five thousand pictures on my phone there is absolutely no telling what's on that thing so it's a nude in there somewhere. and i'm not <laughs> could be me could be it just could be anybody i mean not anybody it, it can't be me it's not you but <laughs> i mean who but who knows um but i'm not going through 4500 pictures to make somebody comfortable with something that i probably will never see anyway right. um and then if I get to see it, I mean, it doesn't mean it. Honestly, it doesn't mean anything to me if I see a nude picture right. from 10 years ago. So, and the difference here, because let me, let me shoot myself some bell here before I got painted as an ultimate bad guy is, if a nude picture comes and my girlfriend at the time asked for me to delete it, I have no problem with deleting right. it. Now, you're not going to say delete all your pictures. I'm not going through my phone. There's a lot of those I'm, relationships. And I'm I think not going that's, through every single yeah. picture to mm-hmm. find them, you know, like. That's right. Hey, I'll, I'll make sure you won't see them because I don't see them. They up in the vault somewhere. And we keep them there. Um, right. You know, now. It doesn't that, even have to be news. It doesn't even have to be news because a lot of people on Facebook try to delete like pictures of me. And you. No, it, I mean, just you and me kissing or you and that person Kiss holding hands and, you know, you know, just being in intimate situations. Oh, like it you, doesn't you, necessarily you want me to go back to my whole Facebook page. Of Some people do. 150,000 pictures and yeah. find every one that I went with a girl and delete it. I, there's a lot you of relationships. You crazy so, award yeah. for that. So we're You're talking nuts. about on your worst behavior, right? Worse. So... Don't do that. In relationships. These relationships start like this, come out the gate, and some people feel like they already have to do it, like go in and you know whitewash. It's called whitewashing, um, whitewashing I'm something. Be called blackwashing. Right. I'm just. That's a different kind of washing. Okay. <laughs> but no, it's like washing. That, that's that's entirely ridiculous yeah. in itself. Um, I am not going through all my Facebook pictures and deleting all, any old pictures of me and my exes. Right. That's I don't. You care about that more than I do. You go do it. Actually, I wouldn't don't because you ain't hitting my face. I wouldn't. Password. I wouldn't think that you'd have a you specifically personally would have a relationship with somebody that is that um the, the ex, that extra that possessive. Yeah. I mean, I think you probably. I know you could probably run into a couple of those chicks, but you want me personally? Yeah, you personally. I, I, I've had a few of those. Yeah, but I would think that you just knowing you um that you would not tolerate it. It would just, it would, the, it would, that, that yeah, whole, you know, that whole candle would burn out so fast. Yeah. We're not doing that. Yeah. You're, you're not making me go through my stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, now with the new pictures, I understand if you yeah. be like, Oh, you have new pictures but, of that person. Don't yeah. like, them. But the, right. you know, the whole jealousy cool. slash stalking, my cloud still yeah. has them. stalking slash whatever it is, you know, you, you ain't, you ain't yeah. got to stalk me. I'll tell you where I'm at. Cut that right. shit out. 
<laughs> so I want I, I want to talk about something really quick after talking those three subjects. So wait, 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 before you oh. before you do that, mm-hmm. do you delete nudes? I play the after a relationship is done. No, no, no. This, <laughs> well, this is not me to fit. Oh, I keep thinking we're playing. Ashley, <laughs> I keep thinking we're on that show. No, that's um, the other one. I haven't. You haven't. I have not. Okay. And I, to be fair, a week ago, um, I was news. talking with that person, and I actually had mentioned it, and I said, Your "I'm person? sure, yeah, I'm sure AP. I have plans." Your name is AP Ashley's person. <laughs> Ashley's person, yes. and, you know. And I had said, "Hey, I'm sure I have all kinds of stuff." I'm like, "You're more than welcome to look at." And he's like, "No, <laughs> well, I don't want to look at that shit because." Yeah. I don't even want to go to your phone unless you're showing me pictures. You don't want to go to my phone. I'm just telling you. No, well, I'm not going to your <laughs> phone. AP might. Right. But uh, if you show me pictures of you and you're like, just have me looking at them, I don't want to swipe and see like a, 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 a giant penis ah, or ah, something. Ah. I shouldn't say giant. I don't know. But I, I don't know what y'all into. <laughs> I, I don't want to see a penis at all. <laughs> you know. So, at the my, end of the day. Mine is enough. I like the way mine yeah. looks. I'm good. I don't need to see anybody else's. Um, well, so. to be fair, I've, I, because I do business and I have all my devices connected to each other, you to be fair, I usually, businesses? I have an iPad and my iPhone and my i this and my i that and my Dell, all of them are connected. So I do keep a lot of, you know, even weird stuff off my phone because I don't want, you know, my son or you or, you know, my next door neighbor. I'm not going through your to, phone. You might go on a computer. That's what I mean. Like, hey, uh, check out yeah. my iPad and turn that timer on. And you open it up and you're like, whoa, okay, now I'm sorry about that. So I try yeah. to, there's too many people running uh, through I my business. I want to see AP's penis. Yeah. There's, there's just a lot of things I'd, I'd rather, you know. I, so I disconnected all those devices, by the way, for your own safety. So um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so the, the computer of my office doesn't that. even have your access. So. Good, good. That's why I did that. I got, <laughs> I don't you know, see yeah. That. Um, so uh, as far as the unacceptable behavior, I think after talking about these three things and on your worst behavior, <laughs> um, I, so when our podcast came out and you made me talk about having a boyfriend, um, Ashley's got a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's interesting because I was a pub. I, I remember I hadn't gone public. That was like my first time even telling anybody I had a boyfriend. That was the first time I heard of it. Uh, yeah. And so, and I didn't, you know, I, I didn't ever call a boyfriend. I said, um, what did I say? Uh, my person. And mm. I mean, that's because actually that's way more special than having just a, saying, Hey, I have a boyfriend. Um, so oh, hey, he's, special. He's, he's very special. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that all my, you know, not all of them, but a lot of my guy friends and some of my girlfriends and people I was thinking about going on a date with later. Mm-hmm. Um, the unacceptable part was, that a lot of them didn't respect. They're like, oh, that'll last. Or, you know, what are you going to do in a week from now? Or, you know, I bet you can't handle that, all that. You know, <laughs> just, right. there was just unacceptable. A, a but, bunch of worst behaviors. But that's your that's your people. That's your people that know you. That's your people that, you know, probably, you know, we have those types of relationship. Um, I did have a couple of people that are like, so can I still do this? Or can we still do that? And hey, can I, can we still hook up? That's unacceptable. Nah, that, that's, that's unacceptable. Worst behavior. Yeah. If someone tells you they're in a relationship yeah. and they're trying to get serious, right? Don't be the one to be like, "Can I do that?" <laughs> now, again, I am not judging people. People no. make the decisions. You make the decisions that you want yeah. based on what you need. Um, and I don't you think need you to have get out to, of your relationship. Yeah. Listen, if, if if I had a girl, she's talking to me and mm-hmm. she says, "Hey, let's hang out and we do whatever," and then it turns out that she had a boyfriend. I'm not at fault. She right. is. I don't have to do my research for her. She's that's what she wanted right um one of the perils of making money is that you can afford drama so if it's one of those rich people <laughs> right um, nice. you definitely you know they can just so bring i'm that in that that's their tolerance so just because i'm in that bracket of over a hundred thousand dollars between a hundred and hundred and she, she balling. 50, um i'm balling um i not a cheater i, I watch this though it's your oh. person too because if your person is around that same bracket uh-huh. then you're on equal footing you oh. can't you can't uh, cheat on somebody who can cheat on you back if you're right. doing it based off the idea. I got money. I don't need a man. I can get any man I want. Right. I'm going to do that. You know. Yeah. Never know. I mean, no, you do know. I, I think I you know. do know. I told I, Well, I told you the last, actually, two minutes, especially the last one, that was just a, you know, just a pretty much big, big cheater. But gotcha. um, so uh, as far as that goes, that, that was just the interesting um, perspective of watching people with their comments and it didn't bother yeah. me it doesn't bother me wait wait I got one too okay uh, if you 
is it cheating or is it a an acceptable behavior if you accept a ride from your ex or just say you or actually say you you mm-hmm. say you get drunk and you can't drive and you do you go on are you <laughs> why are you talking about more money? <laughs> no say you um, is it it's on my board? Spin out the get question. Rides from, the, from opposite sex. Oh. Is it acceptable? You mean behavior? like you mean like Uber? <laughs> no, not Uber. Not somebody who's paid to do what they're doing. Right. But someone will say who like hits on you, you get a ride from them. Okay. Or like, is it acceptable? Know, yeah, is it an acceptable behavior? Like, no, it's on my board right there. Um, so if I'm at the bar and I get a ride home from a guy, right? Um, did I drive? I mean, yes. it's probably a good idea if I'm not drinking and driving, right? Right. So okay. here, here's my okay. perspective on that. Right. Um, I'm sorry, were you finished? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so my perspective is mm-hmm. call me. What, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why, why are you even reaching out to me uh, to call me? Where are your friends at? Why, why is oh, this? I feel you. Yeah. yeah, like if it's a guy you don't know, it's some random guy. Well, I hope it's not random. G- girls don't get in cars with random guys. Yeah, that's, that's not good. No. Don't That's not good because a lot of times, guys. well, because yeah. what has happened at that point with just females, and I don't know, I'm sure yeah, guys kind of, well, it's because, you know, you don't know, you might have, because you were drinking, you might have said, you know, if the person said, hey, you want to come back to my house instead? Yeah, sure. And you really don't realize. And then you wake up and you're in somebody else's house and you don't know what you're waking up into. You really don't. Um, but don't I see what you're houses. saying. There's probably a whole list of other people, if not Uber, if not Lyft, if not just damn walk. Um, or, you know, you can even ask the bartender. Well, sometimes, um, you know, you can ask the bartenders or managers, hey, listen, I need to get home. Because I promise you, if you ask a bartender mm-hmm. um, or a manager at any place and you need to get home, they will make sure you get home. They, it's yes. huge liability. Well, bartenders will yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, um, now, I didn't say go home with the bartender. Hey. <laughs> I got Just love saying. for the bartenders. So. I got love for the bartenders too. If the bartender so. is cute and ladies, you want that man, go for it. Fellas, um, especially yeah. hard for fellas. Yeah. If that bartender wants to go home with you, do it, baby. I remember I did that once. I thought I accomplished such a wonderful goal. This is years mm-hmm. ago. Um, I was like, oh, the bartender wants me. Wow. Usually it's, you know, me giving her money and she right. giving me drinks. You know. But it was a fun time. I'll give but, you I got a quick example. I just remembered this. This was from like 12, 13 years ago, my roommate working in a bar. My no, my roommate um, went out to a bar. She got really drunk, and she had a guy bring her car to the house, and then he spent the night. and And I saw Ooh, him. Baby. I saw him when I woke up, and I didn't bother me because I didn't think anything of it. To be honest with you, went back to sleep. He before he left, he stole some stuff out of the house that was mine. And so, like I said, you don't know. Well, it was it was some money and some jewelry that happened to be. I think it was maybe in the kitchen or something like that. I remember it was on the counter. Well, but this is my house, so I mean, hey, I, the I bright say. side, he didn't steal her car. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know how he got home. I think he actually walked. So, but you don't know who you're bringing in your space if it's a stranger, right? Yeah. So, um, I, at first, I was like, oh, at least she didn't drink and drive. But yeah, that was that was yeah. the positive. But I paid for that. Fuck! I, I paid for that um, driving, so for him to take her home with my money. Yeah. And, and she my, never paid you back. No. no. Come on, old she, roommate, pay for that. <laughs> Let's get that. Time. And you know who you are, by the way. You know who you are. Yeah. Make reprimand. <laughs> Rep- reprimand. I yeah. can't even say the word. Reprimand. Rep- 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 reparations. Excuse reparations. me. Well, I'll say that a couple of times. Fellas. Worse. Yeah. So, um, anyway, <laughs> so. So, yeah, I think that's been a great topic. I think that uh, being on your best behavior. On um, your worst behavior. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm being the other, other advocate. I'm being on your best behavior. Um, I think just it, be on your It's behavior. about boundaries and it's about communication. It's about, you know, oh gosh, it's about respect. And you know, I think you, hold on. I think you know, though. If you have to ask, you know the question. you have to ask. Well, that goes to the... Defining your relationship and what you guys do, mm-hmm. partner situation. So we just gonna right. run that balance out every week, right? But yeah, but no, I thought I think everybody should just be on their best behavior, mm-hmm. or if you're gonna be in your worst behavior, make it the best at being the worst, you know, get it in there. But uh, with that, I mean, I'm ready to get out of here and hit the bar for happy hour <laughs> so you can and work on I'm so you can go work on your next situation or your worst behavior hey, I'm not the one with the situation um, and relationship. I'm gonna stay at home and I'm going to do a little bit of work and um, my other person um, is 
out and hanging out with some friends. I'm giving him some space, by the way. Isn't that I, mean, I wish good? I was that other person. I know. I'm friend. giving him I, some space. I, I wish I was his friend so yeah. I can get invited to hang when out he's, with him. When he's done bowling, I might go up there and hang out for a few minutes. You oh, know? he bowls, huh? Yeah. Not mm-hmm. him, yeah. yeah. So, um, well, it was nice talking to you, Fuzzy B. Always a pleasure, Ashley D. Thanks for the great tunes and the great high energy. Yes, I love the energy. Part in our sarcasm.